Hello friends of Golf Course Quality Fertilizer. Well, we've just had four days of just wet, wet grass, wet all the time. Uh, and we just had talked about with all that rain, we need to get our September 1st application down earlier in order to help get rid of some of these diseases we started getting. And then you probably put that down or maybe you're just getting ready to put it down or you, whatever it may be, but the, the diseases are still getting worse. So we did the same thing with the backyard. We started getting a little bit of uh, diseases. We put down our 4th of July application. Actually, it was a little late on it. Uh, and things were getting green and better. And then we had all that rain. And now here we are Monday uh, after all that wet weekend. Uh, and we are getting some diseases, dollar spot. Now down in here, see, we haven't mowed our grass yet. We kind of let it do its thing with all that heat this weekend. We're probably gonna mow it today or tomorrow. I'm not sure, probably have to double cut because it let, let it get so long. But if you look on here, if you look at these scars, this is dollar spot. And that's one of the easiest diseases, most common, but also easiest to kind of take care of in the lawn. Uh, if you're feeding your lawn well, uh, then you won't have much of this. And if you do get it, uh, like we have a little bit here, um, it'll grow out really fast. Uh, you just make, make sure that your yard's not starting to lose its nutrients, right? And so that's the dollar spot scar. Little brown on one side, bleached white, they call it an hourglass shape that it does to the leaf. And then another brown uh, at the top as well. Here's some better ones, there's a couple different scars. In the morning time, when you come out, if you see white cottony around these areas, that means it's active. So if you have the spots and say it's been dry for three days and you come back out and you're not seeing any cottony stuff going on, uh, that's the mycelia, then that means that it's, that it's no longer active. So sometimes you'll have to put like a fungicide down. If you're doing that uh, and you don't see it heal up real fast, is because it takes time to grow those scars and everything out of there. Plus with uh, certain fungicides, it takes a while for it to get into the plant system. So it may be a few days delayed. And then it's like finally two weeks later, it starts getting better, but then you can get new diseases already. And that's why fungicides are so uh, unreliable as far as trying to fix a problem fast because you have to put one down and then if you still have that same pressure, you have to put it down earlier or maybe even a little bit later. Now fertilizer, same kind of thing. You know, if we've put one down already, we're just gonna have to have patience and wait for it to dry out and kind of just mow it off. If it looks like it's persisting, then you might have to sneak in an organic on top of how that September just came in. So, I mean, if you're really upset about it, we are gonna do nothing. We're just gonna mow the lawn. We're gonna wait till it needs water before we water it. And before you know it, all these spots are gone, healed up, never even knew they were there. And so that's how we handle it. We don't start worrying right away with diseases, a couple of brown spots, because we know how much our yard can handle and it can recover itself. And so, you know, a lot of people who've been on the program a really long time on our program for at least seven plus years, they know that they never ask questions necessarily unless it starts getting bad, bad. Uh, and then they know to move the thing around and they know just keep mowing it, keep watering it heavy, but infrequent. Uh, and it'll typically make it through any situation. Now back here we got another little scenario with all the rain and the wetness. We used to have a play set here uh, and we have some yellowing grass. And that means that it's, that area is not draining real well. It's holding moisture in that area. And so the roots are staying saturated with water. And so if they stay completely saturated with no air in that root area, then they can't bring the nutrients in and you start getting this yellowing of grass. Uh, it has to have that gas exchange in the roots in order to take up the nutrient and bring it to the leaf. And the nutrient, nitrogen, potassiums, irons, manganese, all kinds of things, when they go into the leaf, they change the leaf color to green. In order for that sun, the most optimal green color brings in the most sunlight and creates the most energy to put back down and make in the roots. And so it's just this cycle, right? Well, whenever that's disrupted, then you'll get this yellow look to it. And it takes a long time for that to go away. It seems like forever for me. Uh, but we did aerify this area last year really heavily. Uh, and it's actually a lot better than what it normally is. Matter of fact, over there used to be a whole lot greener and it's barely light green now. It's really only here. And now there's actually green spots in the middle of it. 
So I bet if we just continue to airify, airification is so important for so many things. Just go ahead and core airify your lawn every year in September. That's really, if you want a good lawn, you have to have that practice in the lawn uh, program. Uh, let's come over here. Oh yeah, I have a new dog and obviously he's tired and sleepy. <laughs> come over here real quick. We're gonna show an area Right here is a stressed out area. And I get a lot of pictures from people in, uh, from emails talking about these kind of areas and it's thinning out and things are dying. Um, and we have that happen too in a lot of different areas, uh, especially when we get drought stress. So this kind of stressed out a little bit, uh, mainly because this is a dog run. The dogs run here all the time. And so they're beating this grass up constantly which then makes it even harder for it to kind of stay green and thick. But see, we aren't worried about this because come September, I won't even know this happened. It'll fill itself all right back in all by itself. It happens all the time. And we just kind of leave it be, it is what it is. I don't get too excited about it. My yard looks good probably 98% of the time throughout the year. There are spots that look kind of bad, but if you look at the yard overall, it's nice and green and healthy and so you know I don't get too caught up in situations like this if it gets real bad sometimes I'll throw some seed in but you would be surprised this plant here can go boom and be this big in no time this little guy coming back so you can already see it's coming back into uh, filling back in come September it's gonna be done for All right. All right over here too Another area that kind of stresses out and actually a little bit of disease sometimes will come into these areas and kind of make it look a little worse. You'll get this weird stuff going on. So, you know, don't worry about those kind of things. They'll get better. In order to help, come through with a rake and kind of rake it up and kind of get air down in there. It'll actually recover faster. It'll start looking better actually while you're raking it. And you're gonna start exposing these little green guys down here that are already starting to come back. And so you're gonna expose them and it's gonna fill itself right back in. So really a rake in most situations where you have a disease or something will do most of the healing and just making sure you're staying on that fertilizer program consistently. And if you gotta do it a little early, then do it. You know, so don't get too hung up on these spots or worried about these spots uh, unless they start to spread across the whole lawn. But if they're just little isolated spots, Come in here, rake them up a little bit. Maybe when you're fertilizing that next time, hit a little extra in that area just to kind of help it build itself back up again. And very little seed is needed. But this is the time to do seeding, right? So if you need to seed, do it now. Don't do it in the spring. I bet a lot of people who seeded in this spring are really struggling with that little seedlings in those areas because hot weather, and we've had a lot of it, a lot of wet weather, little baby seeds man they just tend to just melt right out and die uh, so try to seed now that way it'll be nice and strong for the next time come this year all right thanks for listening talk to you later